everybody. Welcome back today to my latest video. I don't know about you, but I always finish up the holidays, start January needing cards. I usually need some cards to send as thank yous for the sweet gifts that I got. Or sometimes there's a few people that fell through the cracks in my holiday card list and I want to send them a nice greeting in the winter. So I decided to make a stack of bright and fun and watercolored winter greetings. To do this, I am going to be using the Newton's Nook Snowfall Roundabout and Snowman Roundabout. Now, I love everything about summer, but I love me some snowflakes and snowman stamps. As long as I don't need to feel the actual cold, I love, love, love designing with them. So what I'm doing here is I have a sheet of Distress watercolor cardstock in my Mini Misty and I'm using the smooth side. I used a EK Tools powder tool to dust it off, make sure there's no static cling, and I am stamping it the image in Versamark and I am going to be using white embossing powder to emboss the image on the back of the panel. So I did a whole bunch of the snowman ones and I did a whole bunch of the snowflake ones. Um, I don't really think you need to see me embossing all of them, but I got a whole stack of them done and ready to watercolor. I then have a sheet of cardstock that I have laminated. I use this as my palette when I am watercoloring with Distress Inks. So I took the regular Distress Ink and I pressed the ink pad and twist it down onto this cardstock and it creates a really nice palette. I love that I can see the color of the ink and of course, you know, it doesn't dry up because it's a non-porous surface. So what you see here is I am using Peacock Feathers and Wilted Violet. You could definitely use Distress Oxides to uh, do a similar design for your card. The look will be a little different. Distress Oxides are a bit more opaque because of the pigment properties that they have and a little less translucent, but both would work just as well. So I am adding water with my brush down onto the Distress Watercolor cardstock, and then I'm taking my wet brush into the ink bringing the ink down onto the paper and moving it around wherever I had laid the water down. This point in time, I'm trying not to blend the two colors together. I'm really just getting the color down. I'm gonna do a lot more uh, steps and layers uh, to this, but right now I just wanted to get some of the teal and some of the purple down on the cardstock. I'm actually going to take my Ranger heat tool and I'm going to heat this panel up a little bit. I don't want it to be sopping wet from all the water that I had laid down previously. I really, really love using a Ranger heat tool whenever I'm trying to do any Distress Ink techniques instead of an embossing gun. It doesn't uh, scorch the cardstock and you can really keep the heat tool on your cardstock longer. Now that the panel is dry a little bit, it's not dry, you know, crispy dry, but just dry to get rid of some of that moisture, I am taking a wet paintbrush and I am just basically blending the two colors together. Distress inks are very reactive to water, so even though I heat set it, it is not permanently heat set. It's still going to move around once water is touched to it. So I'm taking a wet brush and blending in between the two colors, the wilted violet and the peacock feathers, which is mixing the two colors together and giving a beautiful in-between color. And I brought that third color that I just created into the center of the panel. And now I just want my teal to be a little bit brighter. So I'm adding some more layers of the peacock feathers in the teal areas. This is really, honestly, you guys, a ton of fun. I could create watercolor panels with Distress Inks all day, every day. I find it very relaxing. I love to move the 
colors around. I love to blend the colors together. And I really just love to see the magic that is distress. Um, so that's also partially why I probably made a stack of these cards is because I was addicted and I couldn't stop. So now you can see I'm just using the Ranger heat tool again just to heat the panel a little bit just to get those colors to stop running with the wet water. And then once this is done, I'm going to add some shimmery magic to the panels. I actually took some Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust. It comes in this little bottle right here. It is very concentrated. It will last you a very long time. I squeezed a few drops into this empty spritzer and added water. And you saw that shimmery magic that is now in the bottle. So now I'm spritzing this panel with that shimmery watercolor substance and Basically, you could see right away the Distress inks were reactive to that water, and now I have a nice shimmery panel. The reason why I am spritzing this solution onto the snowflake panel instead of painting it on with a paintbrush is I wanted the inks to react to the water. I wanted the inks to wick out, and I wanted them to have this more organic feel instead of the handmade, basically me painting on the sections. Um, this gave it a little bit more of a natural look and again, a more organic look. So now for the next section of the video, I am just basically playing with these other watercolor panels. I can't stress enough, there is no rhyme or reason to it. I would just encourage you guys to you know, heat emboss with white embossing powder on some watercolor cardstock and just play. Um, you can see here, sometimes I'm laying the water down, sometimes I'm not. I'm just making sure I have a lot of water on my brush and then I'm bringing the ink into it. Uh, the only thing I would just suggest is be heavy with your water um, because then you're gonna get some really nice flow of the inks and then you'll also start to get some movement of the ink so that they'll start to blend together. And that's honestly really when the magic happens. So of course, be careful what colors you're using. Make sure when they blend together, they're gonna make a pretty color and they're not gonna make mud. But that is basically all that I'm doing here is just playing. Like I said, I could do this all day, every day. So I'm going to speed up the video a little bit. I will give you guys some um, information as you're watching because I do kind of change my processes each time I create a panel. And the real reason why I did this is I wanted you guys to see there is really no right or wrong way to doing this. It is all creative play and you are all going to love the results when you're done. The paintbrush that I'm using is just a number three round brush. I really just didn't want something that was so detailed that it wasn't going to hold a decent amount of water. Uh, so it really doesn't matter what type of paintbrush or what size you do. I would just do a bit larger of a paintbrush. So again, when you are dipping into the water, your paintbrush is able to hold on to a lot of that water. You can see here I'm picking up a lot of water to manipulate the color, moving color around, blending it. I am not worrying about if my sections are evenly spaced or anything like that. I am just having a whole lot of fun. Spraying that liquid stardust magic out of the spritzer really moves the colors around. I love, love, love when this happens. And then I am now heating it with the heat tool just to get it to stop moving while I set it aside to dry. But you can just see that shimmer. It is so, so pretty. This time, I'm actually going to start by spraying the whole panel with the liquid stardust. Again, this is the Distress Watercolor cardstock. I have already white embossed my stamp image from Newton's Nook. And now you can see I'm going into the panel with the Distress Ink. And you'll notice right away, since there is such a large amount of liquid, which is that liquid stardust and the water on this panel, the colors of ink as I'm watercoloring are much softer. 
and maybe not as vibrant as the other panels. But I actually really like the way that this looks. Um, and you can see there's a whole lot of uh, moisture on the cardstock. So I'm just drying it a little bit, adding some more intense intensity to the colors by adding another layer. And when you first start to do this, it does look a little messy. It looks a little splotchy. But again, when you're adding that water in between the layers and spritzing with water or spritzing with the liquid stardust, that is when things start to blend and move all together and it will look less sectioned out. So here you can see I'm going to use the Distress Sprayer and I am just spritzing a little bit of water. The reason why I like to use the Distress Sprayer is because it allows you to have a nice big spritz or if you toggle the trigger, it lets you kind of spit out water droplets. I don't really know how else to explain it by saying spit, but it just kind of pushes out little water droplets. So I love that you can get the two different looks. Then I decided to also do a few cards, just one color. Uh, you can never have enough teal, and I will also do just a purple one as well. But I thought it was so pretty to just kind of add a variety of intensity of this peacock feathers. So you can see the first layer is a really light color of it, and now I'm adding some more of the ink to give a darker color of it. And here I am spitting out some water from the Distress Sprayer. Um, again, the water is really allowing those Distress inks to move around and really get rid of any of those brush marks. I heat set the panel and then I am spritzing a little bit more water and I spritzed some um, of the liquid stardust mixture. And then I'm actually just setting the panel aside to dry. I'm not going to heat set it off camera. It's sitting there. And those little water droplets are going to become really magical splotches on the watercolor panel. Um, because distress inks react with water, what's happening over off camera is it's still reacting with water. It actually takes some of the color away. And so it's going to add some really pretty uh, water droplets onto the panel. So this purple panel, I started by spritzing with the Liquid Stardust. I'm adding the ink into that Liquid Stardust on the panel. I spritzed a little water. I heat set it. Now I'm adding some of a second layer of the Wilted Violets just to add a variety of tones across my panel. Really what this all results into is I was just having so much fun and I could not stop playing. Now, I do know I'm going to be die cutting these out with a circle, so that's why I'm not super concerned about, you know, filling the whole panel with color. You can see that shimmer on the purple. So I'm going back to my original way of sharing this as I did in the beginning of the video. I'm adding a little water down first, then with a wet brush, I'm adding some of the ink. Really, I hope what you guys are noticing is that there is no right or wrong way to this. Just get your distress inks out, get a brush, get a cup of water, and play on some watercolor cardstock. I love the distress watercolor cardstock. I love that there's a smooth side and a textured side. I love that it's a true white, and I honestly just love the price point. It's not that expensive, and um, especially when I'm teaching classes, I know how it's going to react, so it's great for me to put in kits instead of all these different kinds of watercolor pads that maybe I've collected in my room. I love to know the results are going to be the same as what I got when I was creating the cards. So here I'm going really heavy with the Liquid Stardust, really heavy with the water. I'm loving these inky droplets that you're seeing. Um, I think they're so yummy. And so we're just going to heat set this a little bit, get those inks to stop moving. The Ranger heat tool allows you to keep the heat tool on 
the background longer without the possibility of scorching your cardstock. Now I'm getting ready to cut out all of my panels and all of my layers. I am using Newton's Nook's, um, Newton's Nook's circle frame dies. I am using the scalloped circle to die cut out some sparkly paper. This is some Tim Holtz paper, which I do believe has been discontinued, so I apologize. But I know um, there are a lot of sparkle cardstocks out there, and for one, I know Ron Fawn has a really pretty sparkle cardstock. But I'm trying to use up my stash, so I use this Tim Holtz uh, cardstock. I cut my watercolor panels out of the circle frames die set from Newton's Nook. They have a nice stitched circle that comes in that set. And then I also die cut the stitched windy backdrop from Lawn Fawn just out of some white 80 pound Nina. I'm going to use that as my background. You can see here how I really um, cut a variety of other elements. I cut some smaller stitched circles, I cut some hearts. Again, all of those elements are included in the circle frames die set from Newton's Nook. And then I took the sentiments from the two stamp sets I used from Newton's Nook, the Snowman Roundabout and the Snowflake Roundabout, and I stamped a bunch of the sentiments on some sentiment banners. And then I just played with, you know, matching up which stitched circle and heart matched with which background and, and which sentiment I should use, whether it should be a teal sentiment or a purple sentiment, um, and kind of just got that all layered so I could get to assembling. I'm using some 3M foam tape to add my sparkly cardstock um, scalloped circle to my background. And then I'm using some more foam tape to add my stitched circle to that sparkle cardstock. I'm kind of figuring out where I want my other two smaller elements to go. So I'm taking my sentiment banner, kind of figuring where the placement will be. I definitely want it to stay within the parameters of this A2 card. Um, so that it will be able to fit in an envelope. Then I'm trimming off the extra part of the banner, adding some Lawn Fawn glue tube to the back, adhering that to the card, and then I'm going to use some foam tape to adhere the smaller circle and that little heart. Each card is kind of a different placement. Again, I was having a lot of creative fun with this set of cards. But um, this is the gist of how they all were going to look, and I just love, love, love them. So you can see here I have all the cards assembled. Some of them have a solid cardstock heart. Some of them have, you know, solid colored backgrounds. You can see the mix. You can see how they all look different. Um, I love these so much. I'm going to have a hard time mailing them to my friends. But uh, something that I always tell myself every year is I need to mail more cards. So they are definitely going to be heading in the mail soon. And the last thing I wanted to do is add a little bit of glossy accents and liquid stardust to the art. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that liquid stardust and you don't always have to mix it with water. So what I'm going to do is just squeeze a little bit of that Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust onto my palette that I was using earlier for painting. And I'm going to take a paintbrush and pick up this shimmery magic and just paint over each of the little hearts that are on each of the cards. And then I'm going to add a layer of glossy accents on top. So essentially, I'm making my own embellishments. You know, you sometimes buy those epoxy uh, embellishments to use on cards, and this is kind of my way around that and making do with what I have. So as I photographed these cards, I tried my best to show you just how shimmery they are. Um, they are, of course, 
way better in person, but hopefully you guys can see just the sparkle goodness that is on these cards. And I really hope you guys will take out your distress inks, take out some watercolor cardstock, and just play. It is so much fun, and I'm already itching to make another pile of similar cards with a different color scheme. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you will subscribe to my channel, and all of the supplies are listed in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment, and I will be sure to get back to you. Have a great day, guys. Bye.